Joey Janela told me, you know, I heard uh, like Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels talking about you. I thought it was cool, but it, it kind of seemed just like, it seemed too big and kind of too good to be true. And he told me that, and the next day, actually, I got a message from Cody on Twitter. And he said, uh, shoot me a message when you can. And I showed my dad that, and he, it made him cry in this restaurant. And it was kind of a surreal moment, because even if I never wrestled again after this happens, in my mind, it, when I look back at it, I succeeded at being a professional wrestler. And you know, especially now, since my dad isn't here anymore, I feel good knowing that he knew that things were going in the right direction. It kind of solidified as being a success because you know if he had passed away like a year earlier or whatever I was wrestling in high school gyms and stuff still I'm glad that I got to share that moment with him and that he got to know this is it's happening and like this this is what I've wanted all this time and it's it's time to do it so absolute chaos between the media the oh no jungle boy Growing up, I had like a really close-knit, kind of like core family. Um, me, my mom, my dad, my sister. Yeah, and then over time we've added people in, uh, my friend Hank, um, a bunch of my parents' friends. So, you know, my whole kind of core support net has been here, always. I love it. I honestly get a little bit too into it when I go. Jack gets embarrassed because I'm screaming. Like, I'm like jumping up and down. Pro wrestling is very like... Well, here's the thing that's cool about Hank. It's like, every girl I've ever known has taken a tombstone, but she's the only one that is happy to do it. So, <laughs> she's cool. Not every girl. Every girl in the world is like, come on, tombstone, pile up, let's any go. Any woman who's been to this house has been tombstone. Okay, don't jump. I won't, I won't. I swear. I swear. Yes, sir. Okay. We might have Ready? Yeah, we might mess up, okay? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> we did it! Did your head okay? That was good, yeah. In the beginning, um, you know, I was a kid, and it just to be in a wrestling ring for real was, it was crazy. That, that in itself was kind of like a dream come true. And the thing is, starting out wrestling sucks. It hurts, and it's a, it's a lot of work. And that was kind of daunting. And then there's kind of a whole nother level of once you really get into it and you kind of have some confidence and all that. Even, even at that, I kind of started to realize I was, I was pretty good at it. By the time I got into, from like fourth to sixth grade, I was full of wrestling working and all that. And then I kind of just fell out of love with wrestling a little bit. I hadn't watched wrestling for a while because I had kind of gotten tired of the product, I guess. And I think when I was a freshman in high school, I, ha I had this girl over at my house and I didn't, it was kind of awkward. And so I was like, I'm just gonna put the TV on. And I put the TV on and whatever ended up happening, I kind of sat on the remote. And I guess it was a Monday because I happened to flip to a Monday Night Raw. Long story short, I pretty much ended up watching the whole episode. And ne the next week, I tuned back in. I kind of watched it again. I was kind of getting my feet wet. And then uh, sooner than later, it was kind of just, I was back into it. And then I thought, I'm a lot bigger now. I'm a lot stronger. I, I know how to use my body more. I think I could... I think I could do this again. I think I could be pretty good at it. Getting back into it was a pretty slow process. I did like a private class down at Santino's. And it was cool, but I, I didn't do another one for like three or four months. And then I did another private class like four months later, and it was cool. And so for about maybe a year, I kind of just every now and again would get in there and do it. And I built this, uh, what I call a wrestling ring. Yeah, because I kind of, the second time I got into wanting to wrestle, I kind of, I knew I wanted to, but I didn't know if I wanted to go to class and like really train and all that. So I kind of, I just built this one back here and I thought, I'll mess around with my friends a little and see if, you know, it's something I actually want to do. But the whole time my dad was telling me as we were building, he's like, this is a really bad idea and you shouldn't have this. But um, he, he kind of didn't want me to build it because it was, it, it's kind of, I'm doing it a favor calling it a ring. It was a pile of, of garbage pretty much. So he, he wasn't crazy about me building it in the backyard, but I told him I was going to build it either way. 
And I don't think he wanted me sawing things and drilling and all that by myself. I didn't know how to do that either, so. I got this off the side of a freeway. Brought it back here. Those are the tires for my car. My uncle made me this kind of protective thing. So sort of, I was gonna bash my head into the air conditioner. Sometimes my mom would tell me it was too late at night to be out here jumping around and all that. During the summer, it was kind of whatever. Um, usually like 10 or 11, she'd get mad. Cause I'd wake her up sometimes being on it. It's a bummer it's not here for you guys to see, but I'll show you. There's, there's a bunch of cool stuff. One of these sheds is supposed to get moved into it. There was a shed back here and I used to get the shed moved right here. So there's a paint that lives right here. I love pictures. This guy was a Christmas present for my sister, who really wanted one. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he just eats pretty much anything, just hangs out back here. Yeah, there's been a lot of shenanigans back here, but my family's always been super cool about it. Yes, yeah, so I have to buy, I think, it's some Alka-Seltzer tablets or something, but I need something to put in my mouth that's gonna, like, foam up. So I think, uh, I think just, like, a pharmacy would have that, right? Seltzer. If I'm putting it straight in my mouth, do you think I should get lemon lime for the or just lemon lime or original? Oh yeah, that's all. That's six bucks. Yeah, there are a lot in here too, so we'll have to test this out and see if it works. The other day I came in here and they had all these beer boxes and bottles stacked up. I don't know, it's so stupid to do, but I kind of jumped through the display of like boxes, but it was really narrow. It didn't look very impressive, but it was scary. I wasn't gonna come back here until it was my time to come back and kind of on my terms. I remember I was at a, an all pro wrestling show somewhere in San Francisco and Brody King told me, he, uh, he said, dude, uh, I was with Joey Janela this past weekend. He was watching some of your clips. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think much of it. I thought that's cool, but he probably sees a lot of clips. I knew who Game Changer Wrestling was because I'd been seeing their clips on the internet. And then I heard that they were gonna be coming to LA. And I really wanted to be on that because, you know, the, everything they do is pretty much golden. That is what, one of the top independent wrestling companies in the country. And I, honestly, I think in the world, without a doubt, they are, they are on a roll. And I remember Joey Janela sending me a message and he said, uh, I think you're going to blow up pretty big after this one. And that kind of seeing that in writing from him was huge for me because I knew that he really has the power to to have you blow up like that. Because I had seen like with Marco Stun and all that, that was, he kind of went from being unknown to just everywhere. Yeah, it was LA Confidential. I wrestled Tony Deppin and that was my favorite match uh, that I've ever had. is the moment really that changed everything for me. The next day I got booked for PWG. Uh, I got a notification that said Chris Jericho followed you. I had to check and make sure he had that little blue check mark thing and it was him. Uh, Matt Jackson liked one of my posts and I was like they're seeing me they're whatever is happening they're seeing my stuff. I was in Chicago for a Game Changer wrestling show and it was funny because this time it was actually Joey Janela telling me he was like dude uh, I've been with like the all the league guys and they've they've seen your stuff. And the next day, I was at breakfast with my family in Chicago, and I got a message on Twitter from Cody. And he said, uh, shoot me a message when you can. I kind of just tilted my phone over and I showed my dad. And he looked at it and he, he just got this big grin on his face. You know, I think, I think for my dad it was, um, I just would talk to my dad a lot and I'd tell him a lot of times, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tired of this. 
I remember a couple times I'd, I'd be sitting at like a McDonald's in the middle of nowhere and I'd just be so down and I'd be like, I, this sucks, like this is not what I want. I, I don't make any money, I, uh, I get my ass kicked. I'm eating McDonald's all the time in the middle of nowhere, it's just not like what I, what I want. You know, my dad moved out here from Ohio and he, he used to shovel asphalt. And he told me he ate Carl's Jr. every single day for a year. He understood that. He, uh, he really remembered what it was like before success. And I think he was really in touch with that because he was always just a real guy. He would just tell me, he's like, I know it sucks, but if you stick with it, it's gonna get better and it's gonna pay off. And so I think to, uh, for him to see that, for it to finally pay off, I imagine as a parent, that's kind of what you want for your kids. He'd been there through it all, so I think it was kind of just a special moment for everyone. I think he was, um, I think he was pretty proud of it. To stop by my mom's birthday was important for me, kind of just because I, I kind of got all my time sucked away by the event, which is, which is how it goes. But uh, I wanted to be there, th this birthday especially. I felt like it was really important to be there with her, at least for a little bit. With my sister being in Africa, and then obviously my dad not being there, I kind of felt not a responsibility, but I just I, I, I needed to be there at least for a minute and to see all those people. And that uh, that made me feel good to see the amount of people there. The support for her as well. All right, I love you. Love you too. I'll, I'll see, see you in you a later. bit. Bye, Lee G. I'll see you Bye, in a bit. See you there. Bar wrestling is a really cool environment. There's cool wrestling and just a lot of fun. And uh, everyone there is pretty much friends. Jake's one of my best friends, so it was good to see him there. It was cool to see the Bucks there. I always get a little bit nervous when I see him. But they're really cool dudes, and I got to talk to them for a good while. It was cool having David there. David had had this idea about the Coke and the Pop Rocks. When I heard that, I was really thankful. I knew that this match had to be something different because there was no way David and I were gonna go out there and put on the best wrestling match anyone's ever seen. That kinda got the gears turning, and I kinda thought we need to weave that throughout the whole thing. So that, that whole aspect of it was really cool because normally my stuff doesn't have a story stuff that intensely in it. It's a lot of moves and like athleticism, but that really, uh, I thought kind of took it to another level. How many you might have heard? A kid once ate a bunch of pop rocks and then he drank a Coca-Cola and his stomach exploded, his heart exploded, and he fucking died. And yeah, we did. We did a little bit of just kind of uh, typical wrestling in the beginning. David's not like a wrestler's wrestler, I guess you'd say. But that he he is physically capable, and he's in good shape, and he he knows what he's doing. For whatever reason, I find a lot of people like to talk shit about David, but um, I think it's really admirable what he's doing. He's a nice house. He has a beautiful family. He has he has pretty much everything you could want. So there's no. Other than him loving it, there's no good reason to do it. He did that huge dive, which was awesome. He got the beers and smashed them everywhere. That was fun to play with, the whole stone cold aspect of it. He did a sick runner, which I uh, I knew he had a good runner. I've done that with him a couple times. And so I, want, I wanted people to see that. Yeah, eventually he got me with the Coke and the Pop Rocks, and he gave me a Canadian Destroyer, which I was insistent upon. Yeah, at the end of it was the, the Alka-Seltzer, which you guys were there for in the beginning. That actually, I was so impressed by Rick Knox, because I gave Rick just three packets of them. And I was like, you know, whenever the time was right, just kind of like 
give these to me and pop them. I, I kind of imagined he would come over and pop them in my mouth. We hit the Canadian Destroyer and then I kind of stumbled and fell and I was kind of laid out like this. And Rick did like a baseball slide around to count the pin and as he slid by, he dropped them in my hand and then went straight to the count. And I don't know if anybody saw that, but I felt that and I was like, this dude, is, this is the man. And uh, I chewed him up and I was trying not to smile because I was like, this worked out just the way I wanted it to. And it started going everywhere and it got in my nose and it was like in my eyes. And then Rick ends up telling me later, he gave me all six of them, which was like double what I had intended to take. But I'm glad he did because I think the visual of that was really cool. And it was like all over my face and I was trying to wipe it out and whatnot. But um, yeah, it was really cool. That moment at the end was not something we had talked about, really. There are a lot of wrestling promos, I guess, that get cut and whatnot, but um, that's not really what that was. You're an incredible fighter, and you're going to great places. I loved your father dearly, and I love you. There were obviously all these people there, but I, I was, I was kind of just there with David. That was just a real sentimental moment, I guess. Um, we were in our little space together. And he almost made me cry because I wasn't really expecting it. There was nothing uh, put on about that. That was just very sincere. And um, it was a special moment for me. I was glad to be able to share that with David. And David is kind of the only person I could share that with. I know you're a primitive creature, but even primitive features need to floss and pimp it up, baby. For him to give me that coat was just awesome. He's a, as I say, he's, he's very generous. And um, you know, that, that coat is not the type of thing I would go out and ever buy myself. But because he gave it to me, I love that thing. And I will keep that forever. And uh, I'll give my son that coat one day. That was fucking wicked. Like legit, I felt like that was fucking art. You know what I mean? That's how I, I felt. Like, like it was very interesting, like great story. Well, there was a fucking story to it too, which I no, like the story I learned was something fucking from him at the end. Yeah, he's a fucking, he's an artist more than a fucking wrestler. No, his promos are fucking on point. My my favorite moment in general is just looking across the ring at this incredibly talented guy, and amazing human being. So it was all sort of fun. It made it a lot looser. You know, I didn't get as lost. I could slow down a little more. And uh, literally, I just hit. So half the time I get lost because I'm watching his crazy, dope ass moves. I'm like, fuck, how would you do that? <laughs> you too, though, man. You fucking oh, killed thank it. thank you, man. That shit was fucking fun. I will rule you in the Pop Rocks Coke Canadian Destroyer. Uh, <laughs> oh, Luke was smiling down. I have a theory. I was sitting there with my newborn baby, and I lost both my parents. I'm looking at my babies. God, I wish my parents had met my baby. And I got this overwhelming feel, feeling that they were looking right at me. So I believe that people that are close to us look through our eyes in life, and you know, they're always with you. So he enjoyed the hell out of it. He's laughing with Alexis, one of his best friends up there. Those guys are laughing, that's what they're doing. But I think when you look at me, I'm, I'm like pretty normal size and all weight. Like I'm, I'm not very big, I'm not, I'm not too tall. I think, especially for younger people, I think they look at me and kind of see um, themselves a bit. And I get a lot of kids telling me like, I, I want to do this when I grow up. To be able to be successful, I think, and like to be my size, to kind of just do it my way, I think, is important for me. And I think I'd like to show other people, you don't have to do 
stuff you don't want to do, you, you can do it your way. You just got to put the work in and make it happen. And I, I think my dad kind of taught, taught me this a bit, but um, there's nothing wrong with kind of taking direction and advice and all that, but do, do what you know is right. And um, stick with what you're doing. And if you have confidence in it and you know it's the right thing, it's the right thing. So stick with it.